In this video, I want to show you exactly how you can build a one-time login code authentication system within VoiceFlow. So I'll just give you a quick demo of how this works. So if a user wants to come along and log in, they can then go ahead and type what their email is. And so this is obviously after they've signed up for their account. They enter their email and it's going to tell them that they've been emailed a one-time login code. So now if I go ahead and check my email, I've been given a one-time login code to the platform. I can go ahead and copy this code. I can head into the chatbot and just simply paste it in there. And just like that, we've been successfully logged in. We take one time login code and we verify that that code is correct. I'm just going to start with the sign up system first. Obviously here we've got the login and sign up buttons. Once I hit sign up, they're going to go straight to what is your email. We're going to then capture that email within the email variable. From here, we're going directly to make a get request to Airtable. Now the reason that we're pulling this information within Airtable is just to check whether or not this email already exists. So we don't want somebody using the same email as somebody else. So within this get request to Airtable, we have a URL as well as the email variable. So I'm going to go just into this in a little minute, but also we've got the authorization key to make sure that we are the owner of that Airtable base. So here is my Airtable base. At the moment, I've just got one user, myself. I've got the email, the name. I've also got a verified um, column, this is not a required field for building this system. This is just something for the application that I built this on. So ultimately what you need to do is go ahead and create this Airtable base. And to do that, you need to just create an Airtable account. There'll be a button that says create base. You'll land on a page just like this and you can just create your email and name columns. And then from there, you're pretty much done. Then what you're going to want to do is go to this profile picture up here and click the developer hub. Once you're on this page, you want to go ahead and click create new token. Right here, we can just put in any name we want. So I can just put in login and we can add all of these scopes. So we want to make sure that we've got all of these permissions enabled. Once you've done that, go ahead to add base and just go find that base you just created. So these are my users and then just hit create token. I've already done this. So essentially when you hit create token, you're just going to get given an API key. Make sure to save that key and we're going to use that just now. So once you've created that key, you're going to want to go to web API documentation on the left here and essentially just go and select that base that you just created. So once you've landed on this page, we want to scroll down to list table one records and we essentially want to go and see this URL and copy this whole URL. We want to use all this data and we're going to take this back to voice flow. We're going to go to that get a table request for the sign up, and we're essentially going to paste this into this box at the top. Now I've already got it in, but it's just this URL here. That's all I have to view. So if I paste this, it's just going to be the same thing. What we're going to need to do is just update this one little thing here where it says max records. We want to change that to max records equals one. From here, we want to add and filter by formula equals and, and we want to do uh, this bracket, curly bracket, user email. The reason I'm putting user email is because in Airtable, we've got this user email field name for my email. So if you named it something different, you need to change this to whatever you change it to. But obviously if you want to just stay consistent, do use the email and that will work. And then what we're going to do is do the curly bracket equal to, and we want to put our email variable. So this is like this because it's a variable within voice flow. So we just put in those curly brackets email and it will automatically assign it to that voice flow variable. And so you're going to get able to get access to this in the voice flow template that I'm putting in the description for completely free. Moving on to the authorization, we just need to put a header called authorization. We need to type bearer space, and then we need to paste that API key that we just saved earlier. After that, you want to create a capture response. You just want to type response and then apply that to any variable you want. Mine's just called email response. We do just need to do a little bit of JavaScript so that we can use this data. So I'm saying email response is equal to json.stringify email response. This just means it's taking that response that we've gotten back from Airtable and it's turning it into usable text. And so from here, I'm just running a simple if condition. Uh, and we're just saying if this email response we've got back from Airtable contains the email that they've entered over here, it means that that user does already exist with that account. And so that's why I was saying if that is true, it's going to go all the way up to here where it says it seems there's an account already with that email. And so they can either just log in or they can try signing up again with a different email. That's not the case. If this is not true, we're going to say else and we're going to go down into creating a code. 
And so this is the one-time login code that's going to be emailed to them, like I showed you in the demo. And so we're just saying generate, this is using the AI step, generate a random five letter and number combination and apply that to one-time code. So very simple setup right there, apply that to one-time code. And so now what we're going to do is do a make.com uh, post request, which just means we're sending data out. So we're going to put in the email body uh, tag there, and then we're going to put in the email. So this is just the email variable from here. So that's just their email and then code, one-time code, which is the code that we just generated. And so this is the make.com scenario that we've just sent the request to. This has just created a webhook and this is where we get the webhook from. We simply just create uh, this URL. It will do that automatically. You hit copy address to clipboard and you can go ahead and paste that in at the top here. There's no uh, adjustments needed and you'll be able to make requests right, right away. From here, we're then doing a Gmail request. So what I've set up here is I've put that email variable. So because we've stored this data here in the body, it just means that that data is going to get sent through to this webhook and we can now use that data in make. So we've put in the email that they entered. So that's who we're sending it to. And we've just set up this little thing that just says one time login code. Here is your one time login code. And we've put in the code variable that's been sent in from VoiceFlow. And so that's been emailed to the user. They've been given the code. And so from here, we're going to say, you've been emailed a code, please give us that code. And so simply we're then capturing that within last utterance. And so this is not connected, but there you go. Now it's connected. Capturing that to last utterance. And now we're doing an if condition. So if the last utterance, which is what we've gotten them to type that code is equal to the one time code that we generated, that means they knew what the code was. It was their email. And so now we've verified that user. And so from here, we're going straight up to what would you like your name to be because we're continuing on. If they get the code wrong and it isn't the right code because it hasn't been equal to, we're running an else condition straight to this code does not match. And we're saying either to enter the code again. Um, otherwise, obviously it's not their email and they're just gonna have to restart the chat. So obviously if their email and their code is correct, we're moving on to what would you like your name to be? So in this signup system, I'm recording names as well as emails. You don't have to do this as well, but just following along if you'd like to do that. This will be displayed on the website. That's just not really relevant. This is something just for the project that this is currently on. So we're going to capture that reply to the username variable. And so this is going to go to another Airtable request where we are just checking that um, we're running this get request, checking that the username doesn't already exist. And so we're just saying that same thing with the same uh, Airtable we put in here, max records one, but we're saying name equal to username. So we're just checking that the name that exists um, the name that is in Airtable does not exist. Um, so it's the same sort of process as we just did. Username um, response is equal to JSON stringify username response, which is just that Airtable response coming through. And we're saying if the username response contains username, that's good to go. We're going to move on. Um, oh, so, so if username response contains username, it means that it already exists. So we're going to say, so, sorry, somebody who has that username, try something else. Otherwise else, um, that means it doesn't exist so we can continue on and make another make.com request. Now this make.com request is actually creating the account. So sending data into our table to record that new user so that no one else can have that information again. So this is the make.com scenario for signing up a user and generating that new user information. This is the webhook like earlier, we're just generating that webhook and we're putting that code or the URL up here. We're then sending the email and we're sending the name. Once that's done, we've got in Airtable the email and the name. So we're just storing that data in there. And from there, it'll just work. Once that has been successfully ran, we're just going to say your account's been created. Because your account has been created and we can continue on to our flow however you want to set that up. This over here is for my project that this is built on. So you don't have to worry about that. You can build this out however you like, of course. For the login system, we're just saying what is your email, capturing that to the email and we're making a get request from Airtable. Like explained earlier, it's the same thing. We're making that Airtable URL, max records one, if the username is equal to email, because we just want to pull the emails through. And we're saying authorization key, and we're just capturing that response to email response. Run the JavaScript to turn that into a usable text. And then we're running the if conditional on that to say if this pulled data back contains email, then that means they are an existing user. So this is the opposite of what we just did. 
if email response contains email, it means they are a user. It means it's good to go because they do exist. So we can move on to then some more information here. But if that's not the case, we have to say, say else. Uh, we can't seem to find your email. So you're not a user currently. So you need to either retry with a different email or just completely sign up with a new account. So from here, we're going to check verification. Now this isn't relevant to um, your build per se. This is something for my build where I have verified users. Um, and so you don't have to worry about that. But what you can set up is the set username. So the point of this is to when they log in with their email, we need to set their username if you want to use that variable down the line of the flow. So we can say set username. Here's the JSON response. This is an AI prompt. So we're saying is the JSON we have. You need to extract out of this the name that's come back in the set of data. You can do this with JavaScript if you want, and that will be a bit more token efficient. But just for the case of simplicity and understanding how this system works from a video perspective, creating this set AI, you can simply say this is the JSON response only output the author name. So just saying, giving some examples, John, John Smith, only output the name. And so this is just gonna pull that username from the Airtable data, particular and specific to that user. And so we're gonna be able to then use that name because we're setting it to username. And so now we've gotten their email and now we've pulled that username associated with the email. From here, we're gonna create a one-time login code just to make sure that the person does own this account. So we're saying generate a five letter number and five letter and number combination. Generate, for example, these and apply it to one-time code. Making the request to the webhook and email make.com scenario. And we're sending that data just exactly the same. It's gonna say you've been emailed the code. If they enter the code and it's correct, it's just gonna say, yes, the last utterance does equal to the one-time code. And we're gonna be able to continue on where it's saying successfully logged in. You were able to verify that that was your email and you've now been logged in. So hopefully that makes sense and that you understand the logic behind it and how this flow works and the setup and approach that I've taken to build out an authentication system. If you did want something like this for your business, you can contact me in the description below.